So my, my talk is about two patients that I have treated with intravitreal caspofungine for fungal end of thymitis. And I have no interest in the product that is uh, mentioned in this talk. Um, yeah, we haven't heard so much about fungal end of thymitis. Uh, it's uh, rare uh, compared to the other uh, bacterial end of thymitis, but I think it's a very um, 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 challenging um, uh, thing. It's uh, very hard to manage. Um, and often leads to fatal courses with inoculation. Uh, the most, uh, the courses are mostly uh, Candida and Aspergillus. And uh, the current um, treatment um, suggestions, at least in Germany, are a combined um, therapy with systemic treatment, with, as you said, voriconazole or amphotericin B, uh, combined with intervitreal treatment with amphotericin B or voriconazole, and um, I'm, um, I'm a, a, a very much a partisan of uh, surgical treatment to reduce uh, the, the um, infectious burden and to get a diagnostic vitreous probe. So now I, I already want to mention that um, voriconazole and amphotericin B have both side effects on the eye. Uh, amphotericin is very likely to be retinotoxic and voriconazole is toxic to the optic nerve. But that were not the main reasons why I treated the following two patients with intravitreal caspofungine. The main reason was my first patient. He had a postoperative uh, end of thymitis after cataract surgery, and the result of his vitreous probe was Aspergillus terrorus. And this is a mold with a natural resistance to amphotericin B and the azoles. So um, I have chosen uh, caspofungine for treatment, and with this positive. Um, uh, experience. I treated a second patient with endogenous uh, end of thymitis after uh, IV uh, drug abuse, and uh, the germ was uh, uh, Candida dubliniensis, which has at least the potential um, uh, to develop uh, drug resistance. So uh, the regimen was intervitreal caspofungine and oral voriconazole. Caspofungine is a relatively new antimycotic drug and it acts as a fungicide other than all the other um, uh, mycotic, antimycotics against Candida and Aspergillus. It has most probably less side effects and the reason why we don't use it so much in ophthalmology and we don't, haven't heard so much about it is uh, that it has a low penetration into the vitreous, almost no penetration in, into the vitreous. But intervitreally, there are some uh, reports from animal testing that have shown low retinal toxicity and a good intervitreal uh, efficiency. Uh, efficacy, efficacy, efficacy. And um, the problem at the time of my two cases was that there had been uh, no publication about intervitreal use um, in humans. So I had a problem to find a dose. And I took uh, the publications from the animal testings and I have chosen a, a dose of 50 micrograms, um, which results I have taken, a, I, I, I took a very small eye uh, to, to be really sure to not to be toxic, which resulted about uh, 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 in a concentration of 12.5 micrograms per milliliter, which is far below the toxic dose in the animal tests and about uh, 200 times uh, the MIC of Aspergillus and Canida. So what were the results? Both patients had a clear improvement just after the injection, and, uh, but I had to do another operation and, uh, with lensectomy uh, a week later, and at that occasion I did, uh, did a second injection with caspofungine, and I saw the two patients after three months. They had minor inflammatory signs, no toxic uh, <coughs> retinal necrosis, and, but they kept on taking their oral uh, antimycotic. So, uh, in summary, um, uh, the uh, intravitreal caspofungin was tol tolerated uh, very well in the two cases I presented, um, but repeated injections were needed to control the infection. Um, there were no additional interocular inflammation or uh, retinal ne necrosis after the injection of 50 microgram of caspofungin. Uh, and uh, therefore, I think that caspofungine is a very good alternative to amphotericin B and voriconazole for the intravitreal treatment of uh, Candida and Aspergillus. Thank you very much.
Thank you. So uh, I think individual voriconazole acts very nicely against candida, but uh, is there a lack uh, in the activity spectrum to um, 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 uh, aspergillus? Uh, I don't think so. I, th I think voriconazole is quite good against mm. all the, mm. the fungus, but um, yeah, I think, uh, as I said, voriconazole has a um, transient uh, op uh, optic uh, toxicity, uh, uh, toxicity to the optic nerve, so uh, it might be an option to use to use caspofungin. And caspofungin mm -hmm. is very expensive, but voriconazole is even more expensive. Yeah, so, yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> uh, I think uh, it's, it seems to be the less uh, aggressive um, treatment that we uh, that you can use in, in fungal uh, infections. But the problem is it has no, uh, or most probably it doesn't, uh, um, uh, doesn't work when you, when you give it systemically because uh, the, the blood mm -hmm. um, retina barrier is not, uh, cannot be um, uh, trans transgressed. Thank you.